What's up everybody, welcome back, my name is Josh, and today we're not talking about my journey to financial freedom or any kind of adventure or flight I've been on. We're actually talking about something that I've had to deal with for the last, say about a year and a half, and I couldn't find too much research on it on YouTube or Google or anything like that, and it has been quite a challenge. And that's why I wanted to share this video and my experience on it. I'll be talking about my herniated disc in my neck that apparently I've had for quite a while and the procedure I just went through to relieve a bunch of nerve pain. So if you're not actually interested in anything like that, if you've never heard of radio frequency ablation, you can go ahead and look at some of my other investment videos, real estate or the stock market and any of the other videos on that or some of my flight videos. If you are interested, stick around. I have pre and post op videos. And uh, of course, you can ask any questions down in the comments. Now to kick things off, I actually do have to give this disclaimer, even though I feel I shouldn't because it is YouTube. But anyways, I'm not a medical professional. This isn't medical advice. I'm just sharing my experience because I couldn't find a lot of information on this procedure. And I felt kind of lost prior to getting it. So that's really important to share. There's my disclaimer. I'm gonna share the story prior to actually getting the procedure, what led me to actually getting radio frequency ablation, and we'll share the pre and post op video that I did on my iPhone waking up the entire process essentially. And then what I'll do is work my way into why I went that direction and what it really cost me and how I'm feeling right now. So now with all that stuff out of the way, the really obvious stuff, we're gonna jump into the backstory, how I found out, where I was with everything, why I ended up choosing the radio frequency ablation procedure, and then the pre and post op videos, how I felt the day of, and then I will share how I'm feeling now and my hopes for the future and getting back to 100% normal activities and not having to take as much out of it to actually sleep. So this story starts about a year and a half ago, March 2020, right before COVID essentially hit the US, or at least we were aware that it hit the US. I woke up and my neck was extremely stiff. I've been pretty active in my young life and it treated it as anything else. I kind of tweaked my neck sleeping the wrong way or tweaked my neck doing something active the day before, so I really didn't give much thought to it. And it took about three or four weeks when it wasn't really getting better when I said I probably should go see somebody. And I chose the natural holistic approach, went to a chiropractor, and the first question they asked me was if I had been in an accident. And I explained that I had not, or at least anything that would have caused any kind of damage for a herniated disc. And so he did actually try to adjust me and it was a horrible idea. Very painful. And we stepped away from that for a while. I did a lot of, a little bit of soft tissue work and eventually got the x-ray and then an MRI almost eight months later. And it continued to get worse, right? So I, I didn't have to, at this point, start taking uh, Tylenol or Advil to go to bed because of the pain but there was definitely some stiffness, it just wasn't going away. And eventually I ended up going to see a different chiropractor because when I got that MRI, sure enough, I had a bulging disc and then a herniated disc, and I had no idea why. If you follow me on YouTube or know me personally, you know that I have been through some pretty adventurous things, in my opinion, and I haven't really hurt my neck in a bad way. I've only broken, I think, one bone. And so I have been pretty lucky in that sense and had to really do some thinking on the possibilities of what I might have done and come close to breaking my neck or hurting myself to where I would have caused a herniated disc. And there's a couple things in college I might have thought of, but it just didn't make sense. And I, I had to do as much research as possible because uh, some of the research and data out there shows that uh, patients with a herniated disc, actually sometimes 50 or 60% actually don't feel the pain, it's asymptomatic. And I actually got a really cool article here that you guys can read and it shows that that's actually not the case. Um, just because the x-ray or MRI shows as abnormal doesn't necessarily mean it's a herniated disc. So the data is a little skewed there. Anyways, ended up going to a different chiropractor that I was recommended and was great at what he did. And I'll put his link in the, by the description below if you're in this area, definitely worth seeing him. A lot of soft tissue work and gave me a lot of relief to the point where I think not a lot of other people could do. 
but it still wasn't getting better. It actually started getting worse and maybe not the muscle piece, but the, the nerve pain started to actually get going to where right from my ear to about my shoulder, it was the shooting pain throughout the day. It was sometimes dull pain. It kept me awake at night. It was hard to focus at certain points during the day. And I did a pretty good job at keeping it under control and not really talking about it other than the people that were close to me. So apologize to all of you people out there on that one. Anyways, started to do some research on how to get this better. And that's what led to the procedure that we're talking about today, radiofrequency ablation. I, I also looked into the possibility of cortisone, but if you've done any research there, that you actually have a couple of higher risks with a lot less chance of reward in this case where they're actually going into the sac around your spinal cord and there's a chance of causing more damage and actually fixing anything. And there's only a little bit of relief. Radiofrequency ablation, and I'm gonna do the best I can to try to explain this is that they go in and actually burn the nerve or basically it's a high frequency that burns the nerves at a higher temperature and creates a lesion on the nerve and essentially kills what's remaining. And if you guys put that all together, essentially the pain stops talking to your brain. And in this case, that really helps, especially if you can't sleep. So how the radio frequency ablation works is a lot less, in my opinion, risk to it and you actually have to do two pieces to the procedure. The first part is called a medial branch block, I believe it is, and it's an ejection essentially in the area that your, your slip disc or herniated disc is to actually see if this would numb the nerve and actually work. So it's kind of like a test, and that's what this, the very first video that you'll see here is the pre and post op is about a month before the procedure itself, and it's to see if it, it works. And it was a pretty challenging procedure for me, that first one, because they don't put you under any kind of anesthesia and so you feel everything, but that's meant to make sure that you feel everything because you need to see if it actually works. And I'm not gonna ruin anything for you, especially since I'm talking about the procedure, but that portion worked for me. I did notice a little bit of relief that day. So ended up signing back on, came back for the radio frequency ablation, which is in the pre and post stop of that next video and ended up going going through with everything. Ended up only having to put $702 down, which I say only, but that's a lot of money for a medical expense and that was the deposit. So I also have insurance. So it, it, it's not exactly a cheap procedure with the chance of it not actually working. Now with that said, they do have a really high chance or rate of success. I think it is closer to 80% in terms of some kind of pain relief. And then 50% of the people that go through this procedure actually see pain relief for 12 months or greater. And then some even see that it doesn't come back or your body uh, gets used to it or your nerve doesn't grow back. So there's a lot of things that could happen afterwards. And that's my hope is that everything gets better because the only other option here in terms of avoiding the nerve pain is essentially some kind of operation to take care of that, that disc, which I want to do anything to avoid that. So without further ado, for the people watching that are thinking about doing this, I'm gonna go ahead and share the videos on the pre and post op for the branch block and then the month of waiting and then the actual pre and post op of the radio frequency ablation itself. So you guys can take a look, see what you think. So good morning, it's four, 512 I don't even know what month it is and my voice is also cracking so obviously I didn't get any sleep today is the test injection before I get the radio frequency nerve ablation for my herniated disc in my neck I think it's C4 or C5 I can't really remember I have to go take a look at that but the day before they encourage that you come in pain so that they can make sure that this injection actually works so Instead of taking my normal dose of way too much Advil to actually sleep, I didn't. And so, sure enough, by about 9 o'clock, my neck really started firing up, which is normally when I take Advil, but I decided not to for this particular case, and like I said, started to kick in. Didn't sleep, nothing I tried worked, even, even waking up before... I would normally take Advil to go to sleep. I would try to go work some muscle work in my living room and try to at least get some sleep. Didn't work. It's now 518. I decided about 459 that screw it. I'm just going to wake up. The appointment's at 715. 
so I was gonna wake up about six anyways and throw basically workout clothes on and go. But since I'm up so early, I'm getting a little work done and drinking some coffee. It really rise the or raise the blood pressure before I go in. So All right, so we are back in the saddle. It is uh, 125. I got out of the appointment probably about 820, but I still had to sit down and not not come to, but get my feet back under me because it was kind of intense. So the entire process of going over there, I guess let me start with the good news is that it did work. It did cut out the actual nerve pain I was seeing for a slight <laughs> a little bit, a little bit of time, but it was kind of hard to also focus my attention on the lack of pain there when my the back of my neck was absolutely throbbing and I was having pretty intense muscle spasms. I was also nauseous. Anyways, you essentially get to the place, you throw in a gown, you answer all these questions, making sure what how everything is going to work, what's going to work if this particular nerve block work so it's just essentially injections in the same spot that they're planning to do the radio frequency ablation so the first step is to test and see if this would even work it's basically like a numbing agent from my understanding and then if everything works and you have your pain relief you actually schedule your rfa radio frequency ablation when you're when you're actually walking out of the, the office so get there do all this stuff and i and wheeled back, and I, I was kind of prepped for it, but not really. You get down on this table, they use an x-ray to make sure that it's working correctly, and I didn't get to see the size of the needle, but the needle definitely did not feel small. They did it on both sides of my neck around the same C4, C5, C6, C7 uh, vertebrae, and not only does it hurt putting the needle in, but if you've ever had a cortisone shot, it feels like that where it's it's almost like something's expanding back there because that's actually liquid or numbing agent that's going back there and i swear to god that was fire that that hurt pretty good and did it four times so you're just kind of hanging in there and the best part about all this is that there's no anesthesia so you feel all of this um it was kind of cool though they do a really good job of whoever wheeled me back there was right there with me it's like take deep breaths you're almost there take deep breaths it's all right so i kind of you know, sat through that and dealt with it. I slowly got back up when it was all done. It was really quick, actually. Sat back in the wheelchair. They wheeled me back to where I had all my clothes and stuff like that. And immediately let them know I felt nauseous. Definitely felt nauseous. Felt a little lightheaded. And sat down and they gave me a little puke bag. <laughs> Dry heaved a couple of times. And they got me some water and it just took me a minute. And from the point I sat down till so from about 8:20 till probably about 8:40, I was having aggressive muscle spasms in the back of my neck just to try to look down or anything like that. Now I do have full range of motion and I have a really cool sticker. I can't shower tonight and I can't get anything wet, but it did seem to have done its job. So I do have everything scheduled for the RFA and took care of myself driving home. So for anybody doing this. It's gonna be painful. I probably would recommend having somebody drive you home, but I, I didn't need one if you just wait around at the actual uh, office. And I did, I was completely fine outside a little bit of pain. So really hoping that this works on um, the actual radio frequency ablation. I'd have to get back on my Advil tonight so I can sleep. But other than that, the test went well. So on to the actual RFA, let's hope this works. What's up? So I am back from the radio frequency ablation. Had the procedure done this morning. So from that first test procedure, which is I think a medial branch block is what they were calling it. And just to see if this procedure is actually going to work was almost a month ago, three weeks ago. And it's just how the scheduling worked and trying to get everything prior off through insurance, which has been a fun process. But anyways, had the procedure this morning and I had to wake up really early, was extremely dehydrated, all the good stuff, and I'm not supposed to have water or food or anything like that before this. Uh, but again, early in the morning, had somebody drive me, was under sedation, which you can see the, the IV there still, and um, have some pretty solid um, bandages and stuff on the back of the neck right now. Procedure itself was really quick. I don't remember anything after getting on the table and then don't 
uh, I kind of obviously remember coming to in the recovery room, uh, was a little blurry, obviously, but again, just stiffness in the neck, but the pain itself was, the nerve pain itself was gone outside of stiffness. So I'm excited to see where this goes. I mean, remember this is the day of the procedure, so we'll see how everything goes. I'm supposed to take time off of work and that kind of thing, and uh, did take a little time doing a little administrative stuff, had lunch. I don't feel weird. I've been drinking water and stuff like that. Again, we'll see how the rest of this week progresses, but I'm, I'm really hopeful and excited to see what this does for that. Uh, it was for C4 through C7, so again, excited to see what that does for the nerve pain and it going away and giving my body a chance to do its thing. So uh, procedure's done. Excited to say that I feel that it did work. Uh, anybody that has any questions about that, I would love to hear any comments in the in the comment section below and see how you're you're doing on that and if you're thinking about doing this. And uh, that's it, day one in the books. I think I recovered pretty quick compared to most on both of those because uh, within that first day of the radio frequency ablation, I did have somebody drive me home, it was actually my dad, and everything seemed to be okay. I had double vision right walking out of the the office, but I was okay essentially by, I don't know, probably about 10, 30, 11 a.m., and it was a pretty early procedure. And back to work essentially. It was working remote, but uh, doing some administrative tasks, getting lunch. My neck was definitely stiff for probably about two or three days afterwards. But I'm now about 12, 13 days after the procedure. And I'm, I'm feeling a little frustrated because I do still have some nerve pain. It's definitely not as bad, nearly as bad as what it was. But have been having to take Tylenol and Advil to go to bed to sleep because it almost feels awake. I've gotten really used to it and haven't really stopped working out. And so that's, that's kind of normal. I'm about to go run in a little bit. And the, the big thing that's keeping me motivated is the fact that I know the body can heal this. A lot of times, uh, the majority of herniated discs heal on their own. And by heal, I mean the, the pain associated with it does heal on its own based on a lot of the data out there the disc itself doesn't all of a sudden just the the jelly goes back into the disc it's not normally how that works but i'm hopeful that this will give me some kind of pain relief to at least make it to where my body will adjust and and heal itself the other piece to that is it takes about two to three weeks for the nerve to actually die and that gives me hope because i'm again i'm, I'm still having some pain but hoping that that two to three week time timeline is going to hopefully reach that that point. I am about a week out from the post-op appointment. So, so far it's a little disappointing about the procedure. So if anybody's thinking about the radio frequency ablation procedure, it, it, is, it is quite a process of going through it, but there's a good chance that it could be something that, that works out. And if you're like me, you probably don't, you wanna avoid surgery or any kind of invasive thing as much as possible and this is probably a really good option for you based at least based on my research and what I ended up doing in selecting this. This last part I really just want to share why and I really kind of gave it, gave it away. I, I wanted to avoid a procedure like a fusion as much as possible and I'm still very hopeful that I can do that and I felt that waiting a year and a half almost to get this this done of course the pain continued to progress that this this was the good next option because I need to continue to do that when it started really interfering with focus during the day and that kind of thing and I'm pretty active and have been active and I haven't really wanted to stop living at all and it's been it's been tough so if you're looking for other different ways of trying to take care of this that is what I decided and what I thought was the best move it's actually just so Everybody else says no because you, you can do this for your cervical, your thoracic, your lumbar spine. I did it for C4 through C7 is, is what I got it done on. So it was all in my neck and I have been very fortunate to say that it is above my neck. That means I've been able to do squats and work out and golf and do all the extra stuff the whole time. So I know lumbar issues are even worse because I mean that's, that's essentially lower back. That's, that's tough.
Anyways, if you have any questions or comments or anything like that about the procedure itself or what you're going through or where where you think you can get it done or what your what your thoughts on, I can do my best to try to share my experience on it and what what I've seen so far. Thank you for watching the video and if you want to come back for the normal content, of course you can come back next month for everything else. Hope you guys have a great rest of your weekend. See ya.